yeah guys so welcome back uh, uh, in the last session we talked about uh, how we how the situation came up uh, where it relates delta p with uh, u which is nothing but the flow velocity uh, and that's a great advancement because now we can do some calculus and reach our equation that looks like the equation uh, uh, people call the hagen poiseuille's equation so let's move on with it uh, let me add another slide let's keep this third equation in mind okay let me draw the diagram again so i have this diagram with me right and uh, uh, let's assume a, a single a fluid element which is circular. at a distance circular fluid element so this is basically a lot of uh, elements can be taken so this is a hollow element element at uh, basically a distance x from the center a distance x from the center right and this is a hollow like a hollow cylinder kind of element with a very negligible thickness which is dx okay and let's let's do some calculations on this element that's how we do uh, uh, calculations uh, in in applications of derivatives and integrals we do some calculations on a smaller element and then we integrate it from uh, the lower limit to the upper limit to make those calculations scalable or scale those calculations for the entire uh, system right so this is our uh, small element so let's let's uh, uh, write that equation again so that equation for this particular element is becomes what which equation uh, basically uh, the P. the yeah so that force balance equation if i write it again from scratch only uh, why confuse so that people can revise as well so delta p multiplied by x. pi x square now because this is area of x now is equals to uh, basically shear stress which is nothing but minus eta du by dx now we can rightly use dx multiplied eta is nothing by but uh, yeah tau so don't be Visco get confused yeah viscosity eta is tau viscosity so, basically viscosity yeah not tau huh? yeah yeah so yeah and multiply it with 2 pi not r but xl x right so basically if we simplify this this equation if you simplify it what we get here is minus eta du by dx equals to delta p divided by l multiplied by x by 2 2 and now we so can equation. take uh, yeah. uh, dx yep so here uh, let me use a different color here is dx here is x right so we take x terms on the right hand side and the constants on the right hand side and the other derivatives which is du on the left hand side so let's do it so du is equals to minus delta p upon 2 eta l x dx and you integrate both the sides and this is indefinite integ integration not definite integration and let's finalize the value of this integral so this integral solves to be u equals to minus delta p by 2 eta l remember eta is viscosity x, x squared by, by 2, 2 plus, plus c c is there because it is indefinite integral so right. constant of integral integration will be there we write this equation again u was minus what? minus delta, delta p x square x square by 4 eta l, l plus c. c so it is basically saying that your <coughs> velocity at x point from this uh, x point from the center of pipe is going to be this minus delta p x square divided by 4 eta l plus some constant term now we have to find yep. this constant term yep and for also remember that term, as yeah as as x is increasing your this velocity is decreasing which was again the the yeah. case the way the case was set up that's mm -hmm. very fine yeah. with so, increasing so x we are go, uh, going towards uh, what we can say wall of the pipe and alongside wall of the pipe your velocity is zero as we discussed earlier right so at x equals to r your velocity is equals to zero and that's what we need So if you put x equals to r in this, our velocity is zero. So left hand side is zero, and minus delta p 
R square upon 4 eta L plus C. So RC becomes what? Delta P R square upon 4 eta L. So basically our final U becomes what? It becomes minus delta P X square upon 4 eta L plus delta P R squared upon 4 eta L. Let me use a different color to circle this part. And this is our which number equation? This is our fourth equation. Fourth equation. Right? All right. So uh, now what we have to do is basically this is just flow rate, right? Uh, and if we multiply a flow rate with an area, and this is uh, this, this is, is velocity. Just a velocity. This is a velocity. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, this is just a velocity at a distance x. Uh, but we need to also have the uh, availability of flow rate, right? So what we will do is, uh, if we integrate u x uh, like over the entirety, uh, we can get the uh, flow rate, right? Uh, so basically, uh, we can get the flow rate at x distance for this particular element. How much flow is there at a thin, thin hollow cylinder situated at x from the center? We calculate qx for that element and then we integrate that qx over the entire distance that gives you the total apparent flow rate for the entire pipeline, right? So that we will do in the next sessions. I think uh, uh, going step by step is the way here. So if you have not understood this chunk, Go back, start, rewatch this video. Very small, small chunks we are creating because I know this is a bit of a, a involving derivation. So see you in the next sessions. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye.